Hello and welcome to Big Num Numismatics. Today I'm going to be going through the biggest coin auction in perhaps the last 30 years since um, the first Harry Bass collection was sold. Uh, there's been the Bob Simpson collection, but Bob Simpson really didn't have any knockout coins per se, but Harry Bass has an incredible number of coins that are either unique, top pop, or just haven't been seen in the last 50, 60 years. And that's the bulk of the collection. Uh, for 20 years, this collection of 450 coins was at the ANA's Museum in Colorado Springs. And within the past three months, right after summer seminar, they packed it up and shipped it off to PCGS, where a special label was used, and they were graded and sent off to Heritage Auctions. So this is a big deal, and it really cements uh, how Heritage is the king, really, of coin auctions, and the money that this auction brings will really show how strong the coin market is because 99% uh, of these coins uh, are uh, unique in some way or some form. There's no gray sheet, there's really no comps, and uh, this collection was assembled in the 1960s and 70s, so it's really going to be uh, what the coin market can handle that these end up going. So I'm just going to give a broad overview of the first part of the collection. This will be uh, going on in September 29th. So you got uh, two weeks of bidding left. And there's 106 coins for the first part. I think there will be either four or five. And uh, it starts off with the go brick dollar. Um, this is pretty funny because this is the uh, most common coin, probably, of the entire core collection, and it's a Gobrek pattern. Uh, it's quite nice. It Usually you see them a dark gray metallic, so to see the original color is quite nice. You can see I'm a 67 plus. Proof 65D cam. Uh, a lot of his collection was comprised of early gold and varieties. So you can see this one was one of the I guess that didn't work. The proof like uh, quarter eagles from 1820s and 30s those are incredible. Um, in person, they are extremely reflective. Um, PCGS really doesn't give out dimples for non-Morgans, but there's a few of you, them that definitely deserve it. Uh, it has a complete collection of $3 gold pieces, including the 1854S, uh, which does have scratches in it. It was graded AU50 but it's unique. There may or may not be one in the cornerstone of the San Francisco Mint. And uh, a lot of the coins I'm just zooming past are pretty high coins. I mean, you can see already with two weeks left, uh, a lot of these coins are in the tens of thousands of range. The 1795 $5 Small Eagle is a great coin. Um, it just eked past an MS61, so it's probably an AU58 that was bumped. However, it's just a nice original coin. I think overall the auction is going to bring between uh, 60 and 75 million 
and for how quote unquote small the collection is, it's pretty insane. But if it goes up to 100 million, you know that the coin market is still rising and still has plenty to go. I really uh, like the uh, this design a lot. The short bust from the small uh, two and a halves, I think, really doesn't fit the design. I think it needs the broad. And even, I mean, it's pretty ugly, I think. But historically, they're very prevalent. You can also see this 64 plus proof like PCGS CAC. You can let's see the reverse. Got weakness in the hair, but overall, just incredible coin. The proof 67, $5 Indian, that's a crazy coin. Here's one of the biggest coins of the entire auction, the 1801 $10, graded 65 plus. And it's already at 105 grand. It's probably going to go between uh, 200 and 300, but uh, gold has been very crazy at the high end uh, in the past few auctions. The 27D was especially akin to that. <laughs> you have another 1804 proof. I believe this is... I believe this was last uh, auctioned off from one of the original sets. YRM MS 66. There's also a Proof 69 uh, Gold Ultra High Relief. And um, along with the gold that Harry Bass collected, he also collected a lot of patterns. Uh, one of my favorites is the Half Union pattern in copper, which is probably a 5 inch coin. This is. Uh, one of my favorites of the entire lot. Just great color. I'm surprised they could get as much design as they did into a coin like this. And it's interesting to see if we would have gotten this coin, uh, how wallets would have developed. And this was struck out of copper. And... Uh, overall, it was supposed to be a, a gold piece, but really not incredibly popular. The giant flying eagle scents, those are very popular, and uh, six is a huge grade for that. This would have been the first presidential coin or a presidential uh, motif on a coin during the Civil War. And ultimately, they went with a Union shield. Uh, I'm not a fan of the scents curled up like that. So definitely glad they didn't change it like that. And you can also see uh, that's the label and the holders. And, well, we know now that uh, it's all gold. I wish they would have done a different color, but I guess that's what Harry would have wanted. 
Here's another awesome coin. Struck in copper pattern. Beautiful, beautiful color. Talk about a lot of the copper coins or copper patterns are exquisitely toned. Um, it was just how the coins were stored over their years. Extremely original. You can see the true view images. It kind of looks bland from far away, but even in person you can see the colors without a problem. You can see a lot of the pattern coins were also eventually adopted on the smaller uh, denominations or were the smaller denominations that were used in larger ones. There's also a Morgan pattern in this sale. So you can see William Barber was uh, made fun of for his scared liberty. Not a great face. And there's the uh, 20 set design that would ultimately be adopted. The sailor heads. And here we go. So, be thankful, be thankful that they changed the reverse. You can see the obverse wasn't changed very much, uh, essentially the same. And you can see um, right here, you know, we think of uh, the hair being a weakness issue, uh, but 99% of the time, even on New Orleans coins, it was just improperly lapping, so they didn't bring out the entire design when transferring it from the lathe. Uh, so that's a big misconception. But the eagle's head was one of the biggest changes. You can see it's uh, much more sickly than the sickly uh, eagle that was ultimately developed. And for those who don't know who I'm, what I'm referring to, a lot of newspapers of the time uh, regarded the eagle on the reverse to a, a sickly coin, sickly eagle. And these are the most popular uh, designs. And you can see they're going for a lot. The schoolgirl in a seven, that's definitely, well, featured, but a coin to look out for. And the last few coins. I think were interesting. You have a lot of old ones. And the last one up being auctioning off is this strange but very artistic E Pluribus Unum five cent piece. It's got the shield, kind of looks like the shield sense today. The true views are much better. Surprised it didn't get a cameo or a plus. It did not cack either, which is strange. So, overall, I think throughout this entire uh, collection, I would be watching out just to see how the market goes for it. Just to see, you know, some coins that won't be seen at auction again for another 50 years. And I'm really excited to see how the $3.54S does. And the Union pattern, as well as the Proof 69 uh, Ultra High Relief $20 Saint. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And if you know someone else who wants to enjoy the collection, uh, share them the link to 
the Heritage Auctions catalog. Um, if you click on their PDF on their website, you can also get a lot more description on each coin than if you just view it online. So overall, an incredible collection. I'm glad I got to see it uh, raw over the years in Colorado Springs. And I hope you have a wonderful day.